All right, welcome. This is Barney Kunze, uh, creator and founder of the YL Success Summit, an online event completely dedicated to the, to the success of Young Living members, created for Young Living members by Young Living members. And uh, I'm a gold leader working on Platinum from Ontario, Canada. And I'm really excited with our uh, presenter that we have on with us today, Dr. Jessica Dietrich Marsh, is an amazing leader from Birmingham, Alabama. She's also uh, an active and practicing chiropractor and many other amazing, wonderful things that I'd love for her to uh, tell you guys about um, in just a second here. And um, what we're going to be talking about today is Jessica's presentation or Dr. Jessica's presentation. Um, <clears throat> you did two presentations, I think, the one the first year and one the second year, right? Correct. Yeah. Now, do you remember, do you remember what your presentation was the, sec the first year? Hormones. Okay. And then the second year, I'm actually drawing a blank. <laughs> oh, the second year was the gut. That's the one. The right gut. Here. Okay, good. Right. Yep, yep. <clears throat> and um, and we were talking about the fix your gut and heal your brain. And we had some questions actually. I'm I'm going to get to them when once you get warmed up here. But why don't you just tell us a little bit for those who, uh, everybody listening on the call live and in the future, uh, to this call. Um, just tell everybody just a bit about where you are at the time of this call, of course, in regards to your story with Young Living, how you were introduced, and where you are today in your life. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take you back just a hair further than that um, to kind of have an understanding of why. So my practice now is a primary care clinic. Uh, we just run everything holistically with either herbs, foods, emotional support, nutritional support, or, um, of course, the adding in the Young Living Oils, and I'll explain how that kind of came in. Um, so a lot of times people will go, well, you know, this is so different than what chiropractors do, when in reality, originally chiropractors were, we had hospitals, we had um, sanitariums, we had all these really amazing uh, health places that kind of got taken over in the 60s and 70s when insurance came out and the drugs came in um, with the prevalence. So I kind of just went back to the original roots of trying to figure out why the system is not doing what it's designed to do. And so I kind of tell my patients that when we have a dirty environment, so think of a fish tank, and if you walk in and the fish tank can't even swim around because there's so much junk in the, the tank and the water's filthy, we're not surprised to see a sick fish. So we, of course, would change the environment, put the fish in some great new water and things, and, the, and see the fish restore back to health. And But yet, in humans, we don't ever take a look at the environment in any shape or form. We just start giving it pills and then expecting that to somehow fix the environment. Um, so that, it, I originally started working more in that world when my second of four children uh, was born. When she hit about four, uh, we were in literally the oncology department at Children's Hospital and she did not have cancer, but she does have a genetic blood disorder called thalassemia, which is kind of a white person's sickle cell anemia. And what they were telling us to do is be prepared for blood transfusions three and four times a year, be prepared for um, contracting diseases through that, uh, growth problems, uh, intelligence problems, bone deformities, she would lose her spleen. I mean, the, the life they were kind of putting out for her was pretty atrocious. And so when I asked the oncologist, I said, tell me one thing I can do to make this better. Just tell me one thing. And I will never forget him leaning down and with, with pure sincerity, patting me on my knee and saying, there's nothing you can do. This is genetic. I'm just here to prepare you. And I walked out of that going, not my kid. <laughs> And as my husband said, I was in real good fight mode right then. So I did not believe one ounce of what he said to me. So I literally tore apart the human blood system. And if you even thought about making blood in the human body, your pathways were, I mean, it, it looked like <laughs> my house was just this line of papers and strings um, where I literally just tore apart the human body and said, well, if her blood vessels or our blood cells are super small and super weak and they're not able to carry oxygen, by the time they get to the point where they have to carry oxygen, they're going to be the best worst cell they can possibly be. And that was the only thought process that I had. 
so I started looking at her as my teacher. And when she, we, we started to recognize how she would look when her blood was healthy and how she would look when her blood was unhealthy and um, basically changed her environment, changed everything in the house over to organic products or vinegar. And this was before Young Living. This was years and years and years before Young Living. Um, now it's super simple. I love it. Um, we took a hard look at all of our food. Um, and that's where I'm going to go today. We took a hard look at our emotional status. What did we believe? Did we believe she was going to be sick or did we believe she would be healed? Um, and then, of course, she was being adjusted since birth. And they were actually fairly surprised at the severity of her genetics, why it took four years for this to show up. And I always said it was because she had no interference in her spinal column at all. It just, you know, that was the one thing she had in her favor. So from that, I kind of developed this emotional, structural, nutritional, and environmental pillars of health. And my whole goal was if she needed four transfusions a year, if I could get her to three, that would be a success. And so when it came time to have her first blood transfusion, I said, test her blood, let's see how she is. And her blood came back not needing to have a transfusion. And I went, great, we're down to three. And so we continued on the same path. And at the next time for the blood transfusion, I said, test her blood before we do this. She didn't need one. Um, fast forward 14 years now. No, 16 years. Sorry, I forget how old she is. Fast forward 16 years now. She has had no genetic expression of her blood disorder. She has never had a blood transfusion. She has never had one of the things the oncologist told me to prepare for. So what we now know is what I did was I played with our epigenetics, right? We get our genetics from our parents, but that's only 10% of your disease potential. And then you can turn on or off those genes based on what you eat, what you drink, what you think, your emotional stressors, your physical stressors. So we totally and radically changed her epigenetics, which turned off the genetic expression for that disease process. And that is some of the newest science of how you can, for lack of words, manipulate your genetics, except we're doing it with foods and nutrition. So I started just kind of taking that into patients who had had MS and they had, you know, cancers and they had um, Parkinson's. I started, of course, when you have new information, God just sends you different patients. And so my patient base started to change and we started to apply this method. And I was just like, hey, I don't know if this will work, but let's try it. And when you're not given any really great solutions, you're pretty willing to try just about anything. And what we saw was within about six months, a complete reverse of whatever issues they came in with. So that was pretty exciting to me. And so obviously my practice radically changed um, to just what it is now, which is we take care of things way before they get to be problematic. And then when they are problematic, we get them under control super fast. Um, so then fast forward to my third child who, who had some neurological stuff, her brain and her hearing and how, how she processed things um, was a little bit different. And it was, it was taking us like an hour and a half to get her calmed down at night, an hour and a half to get her to bed at night. And if you missed a step or if you did something wrong, that hour and a half would start over again. And it was exhausting. It was, it was, um, it was pretty tough time. And a friend of mine brought over this little amber bottle and just said, hey, rub this on her feet and tell me how she does. And, you know, the outside voice was like, that is so kind of you. Thank you. I love that. Appreciate it. And the inside voice was like, are you kidding me? I'm already spending an hour and a half with this kid. And now you want me to rub her feet on top of it. I'm exhausted. Do you not see how exhausted I am? And you're going to have me rub her feet. Great. But when you're desperate, you do whatever anybody tells you to do. So I went home and I started rubbing her feet and she was in bed asleep, totally asleep in 10 minutes. And I went, well, that's a fluke. Let's try it again. And so the next night I walked in and I rubbed her feet again and she was asleep in 10 minutes. Um, so I tried it every night that week, exact same results. And I called my friend up and I said, um, can you tell me what's in that bottle? And she said, yeah, I made a combination of peace and calming and stress away, diluted it, and I'm thrilled that it worked for you. And so then my brain immediately went to my one pillar that I have not been able to get under control quickly has been the emotions. I need to find out why this little amber bottle worked on the emotions within 10 minutes. And so I really started to research the limbic portion of the brain 
and how people can get stuck in fear states and stress responses and how obviously these oils are extremely efficient within seconds of calming or turning off that portion of the brain so that it goes back into relaxation, peace, and harmony. Um, so that was kind of my introduction into Young Living. And of course, I was never, ever going to do any of this as a business because I was a doctor. I love my practice, blah, 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 blah. And of course, that lasted, I think, for all of the month. And um, it fits so well in with what I was already teaching. And it filled a niche that I was not being able to do quickly. So it's just been a really beautiful journey for the last um, three years, well, four years in July. So wow. let's get back to like kind of, that's kind of how I got here. So that helps people to understand, you know, how I teach and things. Oh, yeah, I think. I Any questions on that part? <laughs> Well, no, just a comment for like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. I didn't actually know the story myself personally. I know we've talked, um, you know, at length at, at certain periods at convention and on the phone regarding the summit and stuff, but I never actually did know the full story. And I just think that there was this line and this statement that my direct upline, uh, Casey Conrad, has always used that she's constantly amazed but never surprised at the amazing um, – stories that you hear in regards to the oils and just something that simple um, speaking as a health professional myself not as uh, educated in all the fields that you are but I just see that with clients where we had a, a member who came in and she was distraught because you know she just wasn't sleeping and her little 16 month old girl like they were it was just wearing on their marriage wearing on their work life and everything and they just couldn't get their little girl to sleep and I said here just put a couple drops one drop on the bottom of each foot one drop in the diffuser and um, see how it worked. And they called me the next morning and we were both freaked out at 1030 because they had to go back upstairs to see like, wow, she's actually sleeping. We want to make sure she's still alive. <laughs> and, <Right. laughs> you know, and, and for me as a health coach before, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, use some coconut oil and do some meditation prayer time and try and calm yourself down. But as long as people don't overly complicate it, um, the oils work so well. But anyways, I let you keep going. I just want to say that it was really amazing hearing that. Yeah, I mean, nine-day difference, um, especially with, with babies. Um, so let's kind of fast forward into the gut and the brain. Um, and I tell everybody, everything I know is because of my children or my husband. Um, the brain became super fascinating to me with my third child, just some of her neurological stuff. And then um, about that same time, my husband decided to uh, check uh, something on the roof when nobody else was home and fell 20 feet and had a um, massive head injury. And so it was his seventh major concussion. And he decided to handle it on his own and not tell anybody about it. And of course, did everything you're not supposed to do following a head injury. And um, shortly after that, about six months later, developed, got into a really dark, dark place, which if you watch football players and they talk about this, you know, repetitive head injuries, um, they can get, they can get pretty tra traumatic in, in terms of their depression and anxiety and moods and things of that nature. And so I started really, really researching on how to heal the brain. And again, this is a little bit before Young Living. And um, Notice that when certain foods were introduced into him is when his depression and anxiety got really bad. And so I started looking at that, that connection. And then it's so funny how all things happen at like the exact same time. We ended up getting a rescue German shepherd that had heartworms. Um, and they had brought her to me because the medication was killing her and they were hoping that I would have a solution for her um, that wouldn't kill her. <laughs> Right. So I started researching on why the medications would be killing the dog and came up with this whole P450 pathway. So P is in Paul 450 pathway. And basically what it is, is it is the liver's ability to detoxify um, toxins or medications. And pharmacists are very, very up on this. Pharmaceutical reps are very, very up on this. Medical doctors, not so much. And basically the P450 pathway has different lanes and those lanes are either fast or slow. So you either detoxify something very fast or you detoxify something very slow or you don't have the pathway at all. 
Tylenol obliterates that pathway. So that's why Tylenol is just so dangerous, period. Doesn't matter what age you are, you know, just nobody should be on that. It's horrible. So if you get put on a medication that requires a pathway that either your body does not have or it's been obliterated by Tylenol use or interestingly enough, Roundup, um, then you don't detoxify that drug and it turns toxic in the system. And this is why with heartworm medications, 50% of the dog die from the, the, actually from the medication. So it was really fascinating to me. And I said, well, this is interesting. Do humans have this pathway? Because I've never heard of it before. And sure enough, yes. So then I started looking at what happens um, with head injuries and gut and P450 pathway and come to find out that vagal nerve, there's one nerve that connects the brain to the gut. And when you have a head injury, within a very short period of hours, you actually end up with a leaky gut syndrome. So then the gut doesn't actually recover. And then in six months, because of that leaky gut, the bacteria travels up through the, back, um, the vagal nerve and then hits the brain. And now we have depression and anxiety. I hope I didn't lose anybody with that one. <laughs> so no, what it good. started to learn, so what I started to learn is that with any head trauma, so this is football players, soccer players, car accidents, and what they're saying is concussions now aren't the, hey, we've been knocked out. Everybody thinks you have to be knocked out to truly have a concussion. And what we're actually seeing is no, like, repetitive bumps to the head, i.e. toddlers, <laughs> um, you know, people that are in a lot of car accidents, people that are highly clumsy. If you take jello and slam it up against a brick wall, you're going to break it. And that's kind of what's happening within the brain. So we start to see that depression and anxiety is actually starting to be classified as an autoimmune disease. So how do you heal that? There's a whole ton of oils that are really, really fantastic for healing brain, um, for bruises. Um, you've got to use them. And um, at the very end, I'll talk more about that. But then on the gut side, you have to really look at sugars and you have to look at chemicals and you have to look at products that contain Roundup, which is a big one in the States, not so much in other countries. And that's corn, soy, wheat, and cotton. And what we're now finding out since the patent for Roundup has expired is it's actually an antibiotic. So if we have a gut that is required to have good bacterial health to function, and the gut actually makes 90% of our brain's ability to think, 80% of our immune system, and 100% of our body to be able to repair, and we're eating a food anywhere between two and 10 times a day, if you follow the American food chart, that contain an antibiotic, then we're destroying the very part of us that restores. So you've got to look real hard and close at food as well. And so what we're now starting to see is calcification of the pituitary gland, which ironically, the pituitary and digestion work hand in hand. So you've got to use things that kind of help to make um, calcification softer. Um, and what we, what I have found is things like awaken and frankincense make significant changes when it's applied to the brain in terms of cloggy thinking and, um, you know, not being able to make decisions and depression and anxiety. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, digestion gets better because when people start looking at the gut, they think, oh, I have to fix the gut. Oh, I have to fix the gut. Oh, I have to fix the gut, which is true. But then you've got to go and fix the brain as well. And sometimes you actually have to start fixing the brain so that the right message can get down to the gut. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, and please, if there's questions, ask. I can't see the questions, but Barney, you can let me know. Um, yeah. You I, can let me know if they have any. I do have uh, a couple here. They were from ones that were sent in before, so I'll let you keep rolling. But I think that totally okay. makes sense. I mean, that's just from my perspective, maybe if, uh, some of you guys, if you're on here live, you have the opportunity. Dr. Jessica's uh, open for questions or a quick question to clarify or anything. Just go ahead and type it in the chat box. Uh, but I think it totally makes sense and it definitely helps to kind of bridge that gap of like really simplifying it and looking at, okay, well, of course we need to want to work at uh, keeping the gut clean. Um, and, but then also the brain, if you have a, if you're eating clean, but you have still have stinking thinking, 
or if you're, you know, the brain's not getting the proper nutrients or you're thinking negatively, then it, it kind of goes against it. Whereas if you go the other way, you can think positively and giving oils for your brain. But if you're eating not good food and your gut's imbalanced, then you're, you're not getting the best bang for your buck. Would you say that's right? Yeah. And, and we're actually starting to see the research that backs this up. Um, when people eat high sugar, high um, processed foods, they, they're, they're actually starting to show that they don't make good decisions um, in terms of self-care and life choices. So what sometimes people don't understand is that, you know, their stinking thinking is a direct result of the food that they're eating. And so that's what, to me, is what starts to get super fascinating. And we love the progression of this is when patients will come in and, you know, they're, they're stuck in jobs they hate, they're stuck in marriages they hate, they, you know, can't stand their kids, they can't stand themselves, and, like, just they hurt and they have all these disease processes. And then we start to change the gut and we start to change the brain. And the whole time we're kind of talking to them about it, but you get that eye roll of, yeah, well, yeah, whatever, I just need to be happy, I just need to be happy, happy, here's me happy because they don't actually have the combination to make it happy, right? They only have the combination to make you miserable and depressed. So as that starts to change, the body will respond beautifully to that because we're not designed to be unhealthy. We're not designed to be depressed. We're not like, that's not part of what we were made to be. So you start to see that bounce back up. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh, you know what? I fell back in love with my husband. Oh, you know what? My kids are okay. Oh, you know what? Um, you know, out of the blue, I just got transferred to this other department and all of a sudden it's amazing. I love what I'm doing. It's like these things just start to shift. And I think it's because they start to shift because they're able to now create yeah. for themselves a much better, a much better life. So, yeah. um, you know, and I tell people use joy. If you can't get there, use joy. I mean, it, it, it helps and be careful of the little words you say. Like a lot of people go, well, I can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel right? And I'm always saying, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I know it's going to make one incredible story, right? Because then they, I give full permission for anything to happen. It's just going to make an incredible story. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. I think it's, I think it's really good. Good perspective. And I did, could I um, <clears throat> insert the questions? There's a couple that came up here. Yeah. Um, so one was, could you repeat the stat? Um, 90. 80 and 100%, does that mean? Yeah, yeah, so the brain. Okay. So the brain and the gut. The gut is actually called the enteric nervous system. And if you like to read, it's a very old book, but it's fabulous. It's called The Second Brain by um, Michael Gershon. And um, it is 90% of your brain's ability to function, so to create all the, the chemicals your brain needs to do. So to kind of give you an idea, your brain says yes or no, <laughs> more or less, to 17 trillion messages every minute and 90% of the ability to do that starts in your gut it does 80% wow. of your immune system and it does 100% of your um, body's ability to repair wow okay so that's um, really good I'm gonna make a note here because I think we're gonna have to put this in the call note so it was 80 <clears throat> you back up a second here 90% of your body's function, is that what you said? Your 90% of your brain's ability to function. Okay. 80% of your immune system. 100% yeah. of your body's ability to repair. That's awesome. Um, so I think hopefully, the, uh, I didn't see the name they had waiting for name, their, their name wasn't entered, but hopefully that answered the question. I think that was very good. Um, really, really powerful. And the name of the book again was the, did you say the body? The second brain. The second brain. And it was Michael Gershon. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I'll put that. Um, and it's Michael, like G E R S H E N. I'm looking, it's G E R S H O N. Okay, cool. Michael Gershon. Cool. Um, I hope they have it on Audible because I'll, crush through an audible through. Oh, I think they do. Before I, I'll read it, I'll listen to an audible. Um, okay, cool. That was awesome. Okay. The next one was, um, is I sprayed Roundup as a teenager on bean fields. So does it leave the body or is it there to stay? Well, that's 
that's some discussion that um, <laughs> that is definitely being had. Um, I do remember hearing at one of the farm visits that that was um, the purpose of digest was to restore proper bacterial growth to soil. Right. So I love putting that on a gut that's been destroyed by Roundup. Okay. So definitely use digest. I think that's compliant. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. So, and so basically just use, um, use digest. Yep. Okay. And then, you know, so I, I do want to touch on the liver because I want to talk about why the multigrains are like so phenomenal. And if you're not on multigrains, at least just take one. Um, you know, I've had some people say, well, it's so expensive to take as many as they tell you to. Well, just take one, just do that. Because what, what we're seeing is, again, think about your liver. Your liver is the garbage truck. It, 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 it tears everything down and makes it small enough to get out of your kidneys or your bowel. Okay, that's what it does. And so if you're following a garbage truck down the highway, you've got this great little guy that'll jump off at every stop and he'll pick all the stuff up off the ground and he'll throw it in the back of the truck. It's easy to do. It doesn't require any energy and it happens all the time. That's called primary detoxification of your liver. Your liver can do the little stuff all day long, all night long, doesn't take any energy to do that. But then in the garbage truck, the arm comes out and it picks up the really heavy stuff and then the arm lifts it and dumps it in the truck and then puts it back out on the street, right? That's too much for that little man to do. That's called secondary detoxification of your liver. And what we are finding is because of folic acid, so I'm gonna encourage everybody to research this. It's M as in Mary, T H S R. So Mary, Tom, um, Harold, Frank, Ralph, <laughs> MTHFR disorder. And basically 70% of Americans have it. This is why Young Living has reformulated 99% of their products. I think the only thing left is the kids' vitamins that still has the folic acid in it to remove folic acid out of their products. And I know the, the kids' vitamin is next on that rotation. Because what we are finding is any food fortified with folic acid, any B vitamins, anything that says folic acid, all of our prenatal vitamins, it's literally like that arm comes out to grab that garbage can and it takes a gear to move it up to dump it and folic acid blows that gear up. So people are not being able to do secondary detoxification. The only thing that repairs that is the sulfurzyme and the multigrains. Those are the those are so the what, buttons that I use. Uh, multigreens, sulfurzyme. You said sulfurzyme, right? Yep. And omega gize and then super C and Ningxia red. Those are my like top five every pretty much every day. Because you're the Canadian, so there's other like the the I mean the power gize is amazing and the agilize is amazing. Those are all. So cool, but yeah, yeah. the multigreens are phenomenal for restoring that gear. Okay. So then all of a sudden, people lose weight to the health of their liver. If their liver can't detoxify day to day, it will store stuff in the fat or it'll store it in the joints. So people get heavier and heavier and heavier despite doing everything they should, mm. and they hurt more every day. So to fix that, obviously, you got to stop the poison in but then you have to repair the gear. Right. And that's the step that I think a lot of people miss is repairing that gear. And of course the Omega Gize is going to heal the brain. So that's, you know, that would be like the trifecta of amazingness right there. Right. Um, is, is, is to repair the gear, get the body detoxifying, get the brain awake, and then watch what happens. Well, that's really cool. And there was somebody just mentioned the saying that they were there diagnosed with both mutations, which I think she's referring to, Sherry's referring to the MTHFR, right? Correct. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, well, I don't know if you, I know what, if you decided on your topic for this year's event in 2017, but I just talked to Dr. Jim Bob Haggerton, which, have you heard of him before, by the way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm just inserting my Canadian dry sense of humor. So I was talking uh -huh. to him about his presentation, and he said, you know, I really think people keep asking me about this. 
And so that might be something that you might want to, um, maybe you guys can both tackle or do a different angle on it. But I, it seems to be something that like, I'm not, I'm, uh, kind of educated on it, but I think that it's something that permeates along under the surface of like, you can exercise and be eating healthy, but then there's still like the next level of, um, getting right. yourself. Like, so he's going to right? do it on the, yeah, he's going to do it on the MTHFR. I, well, that's his thought as of right now. He's still deciding on okay. a couple topics, but yeah. Well, but, I can do it on, on telomeres. So we'll, we'll do, it'll be, um, it's different, yeah. but it's along the same lines. It's basically how to repair your genetics. Cool. Cool. So I don't know if I took you too off or far off course with your questions, but I do have a couple more here. Yeah, go for it. Cool. Um, and by the way, guys, if you're still on live, now it's your, or now, it will, Still can enter them in, and I'll, I have a couple more that I'm getting to. But if you have questions for Dr. Jessica, now's your time to ask them while we have her on live. Um, so this person uh, emailed in and asked about the estrobilome, the part of the microbiome that deals with hormones, um, and how is it connected with the rest of the microbiome, um, like how to rebalance it, etc. Um, it's re in brackets really difficult to find information on this. So can you comment on that at all? Um, Is so that when you, yes, okay. <laughs> but how, how many more questions do you want to get in? Um, um so yes, I mean, that's like, that's a multi-leveled question that I am actually oddly enough familiar with, but that takes, um, that, that takes some balance between the upper bowel and the lower bowel. Okay. And then getting the liver under control and is much more complicated than I could even, because who, who, who gets rid of the excess hormones? It's going to be the liver and the gallbladder. Um, so if, if, if we don't have those functioning properly, then, then nothing gets broken down properly. Right. So, okay. Um, so yeah, tell them like to shoot me an email Okay. and then I can go into great detail. Now, would this be something, I know opening this to you on the live call, but is that something that you think that you could share it in a compliant way if people would be interested in it for the summit, or is that completely separate to telomeres? That, that, uh, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I say then, yes a lot. I only say no a few times. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then that's cool. So then, yeah. But, we'll, I mean, uh, I can share how to fix the gut and stuff like that. But yeah, not okay. not not that particular one. Okay. Um. So I think that was. I think that well, there was the other one. Um. And what do you have you heard of the Gaps Diet by Natasha Campbell? And what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Um. Good. I actually, this is a really great great question because it'll let me touch on some things. Sure. When we, when we look at the human body historically, before we had grocery stores, you basically hunted or gathered to get your food or you grew your food. You were completely dependent upon seasons and you were completely dependent on temperatures and you were completely dependent upon regions. So your food changed all the time. There were times where you were heavy, heavy meat. There was times when you were heavy, heavy vegetarian. There was times when you fasted. There was times when you had berries only. There was times when you only had root vegetables. You, you see where I'm going with that? That historically, we yeah. have things bloom for a purpose. Spring vegetables, summer vegetables, winter vegetables. Winter vegetables usually store longer and easier, okay? Spring fruit versus fall fruit. Spring fruit usually has to be eaten pretty quick because they're berries. Fall fruit can be stored, pears and apples. All right, so when we looked at things before we had grocery stores, our diets were always changing. And so the microbes in the gut were always being fed different stuff, for lack of a better word in time. Yeah. So now fast forward to today, we eat the same thing over and over and over again we should not be having berries in December, right? Unless they're December berries or you live in Australia. So we've really gotten away from seasonal eating and rotational eating. And then what happens a lot of times is, I'll give the example of vegetarianism and please don't come shoot me, is people will always get better going vegetarian, always. 
why? Because you're eating vegetables. And I'm talking about like true vegetarians, not that you're going to go get no meat products from the grocery store, but like true vegetarians, because they're super high in the green vegetables, which repair the liver's detoxification pathway. Remember the arm, the garbage can, those are the greens. <laughs> so when somebody's super sick, they will always get better being a vegetarian. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Fast forward 12 years, and a vegetarian is usually very sick. Because you do need certain B vitamins that are only located in meat products. You talk to people who've been paleo for a certain period of time, they will get better. You talk to people who do the GAPS diet, they get better. You talk to people who do AIP diet, they get better. The problem is, is they never change. And it takes about 18 months to heal the gut. So you have to be fairly consistent for about two years. And then after that, you have to start doing some rotational eating. You have to start introducing new things within reason. It can't be like McDonald's, right? But I mean, hey, try a Brussels sprout if you haven't had Brussels sprouts in a while. So there's where I really encourage people to pay attention to these diets when we're healing something, but don't get so stuck that five years later, you're still doing that GAPS diet. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I was just muted there for a second, but absolutely. And I have uh, just real quick on this to not take you off track, but in, in my my 13 years of coaching clients um, from a holistic perspective in my fitness clubs, I noticed that that people would get better. And, I, and I've noticed that too, where um, the vegan and vegetarians would be good for a while. And I know some people, if they're listening now or this in the future, they might have a great argument for it. But uh, long term, I haven't, I've saw it work short term, but not long term, but I really didn't know exactly why from a professional standpoint, it was just my personal and coaching observation. But then I started looking at other people as well that would have it. And I've even had that before um, myself where I would eat a certain way and then I would change it and then it would, it would kind of get a little bit frustrating. But I think that really made, made a lot of sense about just looking at the way um, that the way the food is kind of provided for us in nature and that a lot of this, the challenges that we're having has been through the conveniences of, you know, just modern day living of having stuff being able to be produced and shipped all over the world at any time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and that's where I always tell people if, 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 if a meal plan is working great for you and then all of a sudden stops, have to change. And that's, you know, honestly, that's the same with the oils. If they've worked, 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 and then all of a sudden they stop. Or I love when people go, you know, I just totally forgot about that oil. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, I started to crave it again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because your body is amazing and how it just says, hey, you know, we're good. We're good for this. Now go, now go do something else. Oh, wait, now come back. So that's why I love working with children. If you've never just let your children play in the oils, let them play because they will pick out the one that serves them every single time they lose it somewhere around four unless you really encourage it but i tell you what two-year-olds three-year-olds they'll walk right over to my my oils and pull up the one that they happen to be challenging for uh, it, it's it's fascinating to me i agree i have a well mckenna is our almost three-year-old and um, she'll be three in July, and Gabrielle is uh, 16, 17 months, going on four years already. And um, and she, it's pretty cool just seeing them both when we have the oils out, what they grab. And uh, my sister did that with her kids as well, just letting them, she'd set the oils out there, uh, up like 10 or 15 of them up on the uh, counter, and then let them pick their oil that they want for the night. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to watch. So I encourage people to play that way a little bit with it. So, and if you don't know what oil you to use, close your eyes and just pick one. Yeah. <laughs> then that's a good, that's good. Cause then you're not overly ju like, judging like, Oh no, maybe it should be this one or that one. Right. Right. Yeah. So there is, were you going to go, what, did you have more you wanted to say on that or can I get in another question or two here? Yeah. Go ahead and ask another question. Perfect. So um, was it, the, I, I feel like this could be a really big one, um, but what is your suggestions in regards to getting the body rid of parasites? Parasite. I mean, easy. <laughs> so, um, and then you've got to do the whole 30 because you've got to starve them. They feed off sugar. 
So whole30.com is super simple. You don't have to buy anything. It's 30 days of basically no sugar eating. Um, they give you all the shopping lists. I mean, if you just spend some time on the website, you'll have everything you need without having to buy anything. Commit to 30 days and do the pair free. Again, though, I'm going to preface that if you have not, if you're super sick or if you get sick doing the pair free, you need to go back and heal the liver so that, you know, increase those multizymes so that your liver can detoxify the gunk that's coming out. Um, and then don't do as many of the pair free. I have a lot of people that can very successfully do one a day, but they can't do more than that. So just kind of pay attention to your body. Okay, so so just to clarify, you're saying with parafree that if somebody if they're starting to take it and they start to have really uh, unfavorable um, experiences physically, then they would just uh, decrease how many they're taking. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, some people can just barrel through it. They're like, well, I feel like crap, but I'm going to go through it because I know I feel better. And then other people, it's debilitating. Yeah. And so, you know, you just have to determine where on that spectrum you are and then just go ahead and go up or down accordingly. And that's one that there's no, okay, so this is why there's no set protocols for anybody is because do you have the ability to detox? Yes or no. Do you have MTHFR? So are you genetically predisposed to not being able to detox? Yes or no. Um, is your liver healthy? Yes or no. Is your colon moving? Yes or no. Um, what emotional statuses are you coming in with? What physical status? So you see why it can sometimes be complicated and this is why things will work in generalities but may not work specifically. Does that make sense? Yeah. It sure does to me. I don't know if everybody else out there listening, if you guys have questions to clarify, but I mean, it makes a lot of sense just because you're speaking my language and um, supporting a lot of what my what I've been doing with my clients, that you have to have a rotation diet. You can't always have the same exercise program. I have people that are always like, well, here's my program, and this is what I'm going to do, and I do yoga and then strength training and then cardio, and this is always what I do, but then different times of the year, different times of the month. Uh, different time, you know, it always changes. And so I teach people that it's a, it's a bit of an art in the sense to learn how, what you eat and how you feel, what you lift or what you don't lift or how you exercise and how you feel so that you can pay attention and judge by results. Um, and I'm, I'm really kind of getting that, that that's a big focus of what you teach people too, Dr. Jessica, but just to, to, learn, to judge by results. Would you say that's. Yeah. Cause the body regenerates consistently, constantly. You have cells regenerating on every second of the day. So your your system should be able to change and should be able to handle more the more you feed it and get it healthier. So there's nothing in your body that's stagnant. So we can't be stagnant. Yeah, I agree. And um, the, the website Dolores was asking, she said she appreciates the answer. That was really good. And the, the website that you're saying for parasites, which really it's not directly for parasites, but it's just um, a, a good support of eating like that for nutrition and meal plans that is all sugar free is whole30.com, correct? Correct. It is how to eliminate sugars out of your diet. Children should have about 25 grams of sugar a day. And that's kind of, you know, under 16. And then adults should have between 40 and 50 grams of sugar a day. And that's fruit as well. And so if you think when you start spending some time with marking how much sugar you're actually consuming, there are some people that are in the 200s. So when we really start to look at one of the best things you can do to restore your health, it is getting sugar out of your diet. So, and sugar feeds parasites. So if you if you've got parasites and you need them out, then you've got to get rid of the sugar as well. Did that make sense? Yes. Sorry, I was I was just talking <laughs> and realized I had myself on mute. So I was going to say that that was really, really good. And I was going to ask you, what would, in your opinion and from your experience, what would what kind of came or comes first when it when you look at parasites and candida? Um, because when you're eating 
cleaner and you're not having as much sugar in your diet, it's going to help to starve the candida along with the parasites. But what are your thoughts on that? Um, sorry, I just got a text that said police were at my house, but nobody's home. So <laughs> well, that's, um, that's kind of you're going to have to repeat that question. Sorry. Uh, okay, I was just going to ask. Um, my my question was about when you're eating. Uh, clean and you're 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 having so let's say that everybody's going to go on to whole30.com which is really cool um, I've heard about it I just haven't looked that far into it but you're looking at it and saying okay so I'm gonna I want to rid my body from parasites and you're going to take parafree and you're going to go on the whole 30 um, what what is the connection from your experience when it comes to candida and parasites what where should you start, should okay, you start with so um, they can be two to, well by, de by strictest definition, candida is a parasite. So, but I'm gonna separate these out. Um, do we have worms? Um, do we have like a fungal yeast overgrowth? And then fungus is different than yeast. So it can kind of be three different things that are, that are going on with the system. Are there biofilms? Um, biofilms are literally, I kind of talk about, they're, they're like the Klingon cloaking from Star Trek, where you're like, I don't see anything. Ooh, there they are. So biofilms are a pathogen's ability to cloak itself from the immune system. So when we start looking, um, when we start looking at, Potentially, like, why would people have stuff in their system that's detrimental? So when we start looking at yeast specifically, a lot of times when I talk to people and they go, yeah, I know I have yeast, but I started doing a yeast diet and I got super, super sick. What I always go is, oh, you have a heavy metal toxicity. Because if the person's got a heavy metal toxicity, then it will allow yeast to stay in the system because yeast is a natural chelator of heavy metals. So sometimes you actually have a process that is there helping you. I mean, ultimately we got to get rid of the metals and then ultimately we got to get rid of the yeast. So a lot of times there, there's more to it than what you're actually seeing. Right. Um, then you've got things like worms and biofilms and bacteria, Lyme, things of that nature. And that's kind of an inability of the body to see the process. So you've got to go, well, why is the body not seeing this stuff? So whose job was that? Well, that's the thyroid. The thyroid's job, every, so like if I took all your blood vessels out and sewed them up edge to edge, line to line, we'd go around the world about three times. But every ounce of your blood travels through your thyroid in 20 minutes. And the thyroid is just a checker. It's going healthy, not healthy, old, um, you know, and it, it'll trigger things to shut down. So if that cell needs to die, it'll actually trigger it to die. Um, it'll tag it bacteria, parasites, you know, fungus, and then the killer cells now know where to go because it's been tagged by the thyroid. Um, so it's this really, really phenomenally created system. And, but yet what are the big things that, annihilate the thyroid chlorine so people clean in their houses um, water because chlorine is in a lot of the water systems and then fluoride um, those and then bromide which is in wheat products not the young living einkorn but the store-bought stuff um, so we've got to look at those three things and start repairing the the thyroid and of course we have an amazing um, product that helps the thyroid to repair so um, and then the, the calcium, the new super calcium, which I don't know if it's el eligible, eligible in Canada yet, is from kelp. And kelp is an amazing thyroid repair. And calcium and thyroid function go hand in hand. So, like, I start really geeking out. And I, I won't take you down that rabbit trail. But I'm <laughs> super excited about the, the new um, calcium supplement that we have. The super cal? So, um, yeah, yeah. And so sometimes, again, when people say, well, I have this and I can't get rid of it, my whole system, the very first question, and I encourage everybody to ask this, why can't you get rid of it? So um, when we start looking at, at biofilms, um, interestingly enough, the herb that destroys biofilms is myrrh. Oh, oh, what do we have? <laughs> so... Um, 
I would I would encourage people that have some issues with that to take a hard look at Mer. Okay. So that was sorry, Mer was for which again? So it, it helps the body to deteriorate biofilms. Okay. That's good. There's a couple of them out there that do it. Echinacea will do it a little bit, not not great. Cat claw, but you can't get cat claw anymore because it's protected at this point. Um, so if you ever see cat claw, it's not really cat claw; it's been adulterated. Okay. Um, and then myrrh is the other one that that takes that. Very cool. And this um, Sherry was just asking to clarify that green sulfurzyme is good for uh, the MTHFR and mm -hmm. help support the body for that and then what about any b like for the b vitamins you were saying um is there any b12 spray with it or i'm not sure if i understand that but does that make sense okay so let me let me go back to the world of b vitamins okay originally um originally when b vitamins vitamins were being created and identified not created when they were being identified yeah. um they identified 26 of them <laughs> that were um, of importance for human health, human immunity, and human um, basically existence. So you're, you're best of your best. Here's the 26 that, that allow you to be the best of your best. The medical association came in and said, I'm only worried about the essentials. Well, my brain is like, well, they're all kind of essential, right? <laughs> Especially if they keep my immune system up healthy and you know, I grow to my you know, maximum being and you know, they're, they're all essential. But, yeah. The medical definition of essential is anything deficient in the diet for longer than three months will result in neurological disease or death. So they took the 26 down to eight. So literally medicine keeps you three months away from neurological disease or death. It's a family joke. Um, <laughs> so when we start looking at the vitamins, and remember, the FDA only allows us to call synthetics vitamins. It does not allow us to call natural products vitamins. So obviously, if you eat steak, you are getting B vitamins, but it is illegal to put the word vitamin on a steak because there's no synthetics in that steak. So that's the interesting little gamble that people are doing right now when they go, oh, well, I have to have this vitamin. We'll understand that that vitamin does not exist in nature. And what we're now seeing, the whole MTHFR is a genetic disease process brought on by the use of folic acid in our diet, which is a B vitamin. So when people start telling me, oh, I need this B vitamin, or I need this B vitamin, or I need this B vitamin, I will always say, great, research what food it's from and go eat more of that. Yeah, that's okay? That's good. So, and the multigrains, amazing. I'm in love with the multigrains, can you tell? <laughs> I, I was just gonna say, maybe you should take two minutes and tell, tell us how amazing or why you love it so much. Well, you know, because number one, the liver is everything. So emotionally, the liver stores anger. So when okay. people are super, super angry, they usually have clogged livers. Yeah. It is the detoxification process of the body. It is where the majority of your thyroid hormones convert. The liver is amazing in the fact that it's not only an endocrine organ, it's a digestive organ. So if, you're, if your liver is congested, your thyroid doesn't produce hormones. Um, it is essential to your immune system. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Everybody knows you will love your liver when you come in and talk to me. Um, and so when you start looking at at how you can best support the liver. I mean, you're, you, you've got um, barley and you've got spirulina and um, alfalfa, which are kind of like just the magic <laughs> trifecta for everything that the body needs, especially in the B vitamin world. So, because when, remember when people were first identifying the B vitamins, they were finding it in food. We didn't have synthetics. And so um, I don't know anybody who is at convention, but listen to the chirality um, lecture. Um, chirality is basically, huh, I really should probably do something for you guys on chirality for the um, symposium. <laughs> the, the chirality is the spin of things in nature. And everything that God has created spins in one direction. 
and there's some reasoning for that, you know, sunlight and, and there's just reasonings for that. So everything that God makes spins in one direction. Everything that's made in a lab actually spins in another direction. Wow. And what we find is that when, and this is really big pharmaceutical research right now, because they know that is the, that is the reason why it causes, one of the reasons why it causes um, problems in the human body is because it destroys um, the cell system spinning at a different rotation. So they're actually trying to see how they can flip the chirality of drugs so that it's more synergistic with the human body. So those are things to remember. Anything synthetic created in a lab will do some sort of destruction. And now sometimes maybe that destruction is worth it, right? If we have a busted appendix, that, that destruction for the anesthesia and cleaning things up is definitely worth it. Um, you know, not necessarily just because we have a headache. <laughs> So there's where we kind of have to, you know, start playing with that. But chirality is huge. Um, kelp is amazing for the thyroid. And then you've got just incredible oils in here with the rosemary and the lemongrass. And I really, um, for the person who is asking about, you know, pathogens and biofilms and parasites, do, yes. do some research in rosemary and lemongrass. Um, so it's just, I mean, and then bee pollen, which is an amazing, um, you know, immune support. So there's like... And then Eleutherio, I always forget about Eleutherio, and it's, it, it, it is like, that's a um, Siberian ginseng, and it is considered the, in the Chinese world, it is kind of considered the all, all of everything herb. Like, if you only could pick one herb to be on for the rest of your life, that would be the one you would pick, um, because there's so much power behind what it does. So, um there's a tremendous amount of writing. Uh, the Chinese herbalists were brilliant. And, you know, there's stuff that's been written about that herb for, oh gosh, a good 10,000 years. It's pretty impressive. So that's why I love multigreens. <laughs> did you mute yourself again, hon? Yes, I sure did. <laughs> I was just going to say that was fabulous, and I can definitely tell you there is going to be lots of multi-greens going on people's order. People are like, I'm putting this on my order. I've already got this on my order. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I'll to see if I can yeah, actually I love it. download the transcript of the – just the call to send some of the comments. People are really loving this. Um, Dr. G Jessica, and thank you so much for taking your time because we are at the hour, and I wanted to just give you a couple – uh, minutes if you had something that you wanted to fit in here with the what you didn't maybe finish but I also wanted to give you a couple minutes to just share about a little bit what you're doing and what you're whatever you'd like to tell people what you're going to be doing I know they're going to be able to hear from you again um, and we're so appreciative and grateful for your wisdom and knowledge to share with all of us um, to really you know as the saying goes rising tides raises all ships for us to work together and, and help support Team Y all around the world um, for our third annual summit coming up uh, but what I know that you're working on some stuff. So is there anything that you want to share with people yet? Or do you want to say information? Coming yeah, well, out? there's a, the, a website that I'm working on. It's the all natural family doc and um, dot com. Right. Okay. And, is there um, something up there now? There's, yeah, you can go to it now. Um, it's in a holding pattern until I move. I actually um, move on the 13th of July. And then we're going to start adding um, so when you scroll down on the main page, there's the four pillars. And when you click on those pillars, it will take you to different videos or different things um, where I'll start teaching more just little stuff that you can do every single day to make your life better. So there's a whole section of there. My purpose was to be able to get some really great information out in small sound bites that people could take action steps today and learn how to start making some changes and hacks and different things of that nature. And then if they needed more in depth or if they needed to have consultations with me, there's a place to do that. And then I do have some, um, some online programs that will be coming. There's one on there right now, um, but then I'm gonna have some other ones that are gonna be like super simple, super easy. Um, and again, really encouraging people to take control of their own health. And I like to explain <laughs> Obviously, 
may now really know why, but I, I, I love to explain why your system would have gotten there in the first place so you know how to fix it. Because if I just say, you know, if you say, oh, I have worms, and I go, well, take care of it, you don't really ever know why that would work. Yes. And sometimes yeah. it will work, and sometimes it won't work. Well, if you know how it works, then you know what to do if it doesn't work, right? You're like, oh, got this. Now I do this, blah, blah, blah. And that's, to me, um, I love empowering my patients that way because you and I should have a conversation on your health. Yeah. I shouldn't be dictating your health. Now, granted, in the beginning, I am, but yet my purpose is to bring you up so that you and I can talk. Um, and I think that's a lost art within our, our medical world and then our, our health profession, you know, sickness profession, however you want to call it, yeah. is, is actually empowering the patient to be in charge. Um, there's, there's no magic bullet. You just have to do it. Yeah, I think, uh, I agree with you. And I also agree from an exercise standpoint, but for me, I just keep exercise, but also nutrition too, that if people understand the benefits of just the basics of even just 10 minutes or 15 minutes of some cardio in the morning to help get the adrenals fired up for the day and, and avoiding cardio at night and doing strength training, um, even 10 minutes of strength training daily is better than the 45 to 60 minutes that you intend on doing. Um, and they see the benefits of it. They're more likely to do it. Right. Yeah. And you know, I even go, <laughs> I even go further than, than that. And I'll, I'll share this with you and help. And, and then we can end if we need to, is I tell, um, especially moms, I think are a lot of moms, set a timer on your phone to go off at some point where, you know, your life should be a little bit more calm. And just do one minute and close your eyes. And the first words out of your mouth need to be, this minute is a gift to me. And it will totally replenish me and give me the energy of seven hours in a spa. And then just listen to your breath in and out for just that one minute. Yeah. And if, when you start giving yourself just that one minute, but you start with the words of like, this minute is going to replenish me in ways you know, that all day being taken care of would not do, then that opens the door for time to help you in other ways. So then one minute turns into two minutes and two minutes turns into five minutes and then five minutes turns into 15. And then you can start going and building from there. Because I know a lot of my moms were like, I don't even have a minute. And I'm like, I get it, but you're going to take a minute. Right. <laughs> I love the, I love the accent there. I don't even have a minute. <laughs> It does come out, doesn't it? I, yeah, I, 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 I used to try to hide it, but now I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because my, uh, my accent in, in, up in Canada here uh, seems to come out when I talk to all my American friends and I'm talking to them and I can see them like just like smiling as I say, I've got to go outside. And they're like, ooh, you have to go outside? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the way it sounds again. Okay, cool. So last two things here. There was somebody, um, Michelle had a question. <laughs> really important and we'll wrap things up here and I have your website up here the all natural family doc com a really great looking site and uh, they can people can use this a bookmark and I put it in the chat box and I have two last things I want to share but Michelle and Sherry were asking about um, why do some people experience elevated and this may not be a small one so if we can't get to it then let me know but why do some people experience elevated liver enzymes when using oils and what does that mean to wellness if you can address that compliantly in a short order um, well, so this goes back to sometimes you have to make the body healthier to detoxify. Um, so what I find is most people have stuck in their brain. I've got a detox, 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 but yet they never feed and it's a dual purpose. You know, you, you have to, if I scrub a wall long enough, I'm going to put a hole in it. <laughs> Right. And that's what I find most people are doing is they're detoxing their liver so much. And then again, complicated. Do you have the MTHFR? Um, are you doing things to support that process? So like granted my, my spectrum of patients, they're sick. So I, I tell people, you've got to take this with a, with a grain of salt. I don't probably detox my patients until at least nine months into care because they can't handle it. Right. So if people are having elevated liver enzymes, they can't handle what you're doing. So you need to go back and stop detoxing and start feeding. Right. So what feeds? Multizymes, 
sulfur zymes, super cow. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, I think basically just back off a little bit and support the body from a nutritional standpoint, and then and then go back in. Right. Yeah. Very yep, cool. Yep. Okay, so uh, last one I promise was the um, kelp, rosemary, lemongrass, and blank. It was something that you mentioned. It's the one that said that people. Oh, it was in multigrains. Oh, okay. It was the ingredients in multigrains. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, this is amazing. Dr. Jessica, and people, I'm literally going to download the chat box transcript because people were uh, and are fired up and said, this one lady here, I think this is really cool. I want to share this live on the call. Um, Sherry said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she said, thank you again. I have learned more in an hour here than anything else. So that was pretty, pretty powerful. And the cool Yay! part is, yeah, really awesome. And I think it's uh, it's great because, you know, we really, and we as in Dr. Jessica and myself and Every, all of us, we're here to help you guys. We're in the trenches. We're I'm gold going platinum. Judge Jessica's platinum working on diamond. And we're here to serve you guys as NYL. So the best thing that you guys can do for us is spread the word uh, of this event. This isn't just my event. It's something that I've been called forward to do. And I feel very grateful and privileged and honored that you guys are here and have taken and made the time out of your schedule. And then also for you, Dr. Jessica, to invest your time to help everybody because I know that it's uh, people are going to be really fired up to keep uh, hearing from you again in uh, the summit for our third time. And it's October 1st or the 14th. And uh, just a couple last things before we wrap it up here. So you can go to uh, Dr. Jessica's website, allnaturalfamilydoc.com, and she'll have more stuff coming up here. And then we had get the question that's been coming up here has been asking, well, where are these calls and where are they going to be? So right now they are on our uh, YouTube channel. So as we were putting on the membership site, it was really just a pain um, for, for us being able to get it out to you guys. So now that we record these, I'll have this up probably by tomorrow. Um, and you just go to YL Success Summit and search in YouTube and you'll find it no problem. And um, you can subscribe to the channel there and then you get notified when these, when this call goes up. So then this call I think is probably going to be out of the 15 or so that we've done, we'll probably have the most views in the shortest amount of time um, is just my prediction. And then she also mentioned um, the Whole30.com, which is a great resource to go and just clean eating. And I will tell you humbly from my uh, corrective exercise and holistic lifestyle coaching perspective, one thing I've noticed um, in the Young Living community is that there's a, a, a really strong focus on taking the products and using the oils and the supplements, which is great. But sometimes it can be just a natural band-aid and you've got to make sure it's important rather that you do uh, – support your body and have what we call the foundation principle so that you're eating good whole clean food you know you can't be drinking pepsi and going to mcdonald's and smoking your cigarettes and then just take some oils and say now it's fine um not to say that you know maybe part-time you can have some of that stuff in your life but um anyway so eating clean like that is going to make the oils work so much better um the final piece is uh on our website or i mean on our um summit page the um wild success summit there we're doing our survey Right now, so I'd really love for you guys to go there to Wild Success Summit on, on Facebook, and there's a we can complete a survey and win. We're going to be giving some flash drives away on July the fifth, and uh, so just go fill out the surveys. It's going to help us to uh, get the content to be properly positioned for you guys. And I have some really, really, really big news. So if you're listening to this in the future, not listening live, then you probably are, already know what I'm talking about. But we are coming out with. Uh, a subscription option for the summit for less than 48 cents a day. You'll have access to all the training in the past, all the future training. And we are building an, an app for the 2017 event, which is going to make your listening and viewing experience of these amazing calls like Dr. Jessica's calls so much easier. So um, thank you again, Dr. Jessica. I really appreciate it. Everybody else listening is um, any final words of wisdom from down in, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Alabama. <laughs> You know, I, I think just don't give up. Um, just because somebody who's in a, you know, a supposed position of power tells you there's nothing else to do, they only can rely on the tools they've been taught. So they have one set of toolboxes, so to speak, or one set of tools and a toolbox. And it's time to, you know, go check out another toolbox. Um, and that's the biggest thing that I just tell patients is, you know, don't be scared to look at emotional causes, 
um, nutritional causes, environmental causes, and structural challenges. Because when those four things get addressed, and one is not more important than the other, you know, you've got to look at them. You've got to look at them all and choose to heal each of them. You know, the body will do what it's designed to do, which is heal and take care of you. So it it can be a pretty exciting adventure. So if you guys need a little extra help, reach out to me. I'm here for you. And um, some of it I can just rattle off answers, and some of it just because of my license, I may say, hey, we really do need to have a phone consult. But if you feel like, you know, hey, you got a lot out of this hour, that's how I treat my patients, period. You get a lot out of me. Um, <laughs> so I encourage you to reach out. Yeah, so can people – so awesome. Thank you for that. And can people – do you do distant, like, do you do phone consults? So no matter where people are, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. okay. I, I take care of people all over the world. Okay, cool. I know, I know that so, um, I presume that you did. And I know uh, Dr. Jim Bob does that as well. So yeah, if you guys have more questions, absolutely reach out to Dr. Jessica. She's here to help and here to serve. And um, amazing. Thank you so much. All righty, honey. You guys have a great day.